Well, this time I've got something quite peculiar to show you. Nope, it's not a pirate weapon. This is inspired by a gladiator weapon that the ancient Romans came up with. It's called the scissor, although in Latin it's probably pronounced something like schisor. And it's pretty unique, it's not something that you normally see. So one of my subscribers who is a metal worker asked me if there's anything custom I would like to have a make. And this came to my mind immediately because every time I saw it, I was like, man, this looks extremely interesting. I, I would love to try something like this out. And so he gave it a try. This is kind of the first prototype, not a historically accurate replica. It's just something, you know, based on the general idea. And um, it's, this is the way he made it. I uh, suggested these cutouts here because the thing ended up fairly heavy. It's not a big deal because it's, of course, it's on the arm, so the, the balance is pretty far back, so it really doesn't feel that heavy. But I was thinking if you have too much weight there, it's not going to cut quite as well because you just don't have much mass here. But it really is just speculation because I could only find a few pictures, some Roman reliefs that show gladiators with these. And some of them have very little detail. There's also some erosion on a few of them. And generally it's, it's hard to tell exactly how they were shaped, let alone how they were made or what material they were made of. I would imagine at that time probably this part would probably be bronze. The blade would probably be iron, but how it's put together and everything, no idea, can't tell. It actually looks like this is less of a blade on a pole or, or tang or, or something, post of some sort, and more it looks like the entire guard kind of gradually tapers into the blade, uh, which is interesting, definitely a different way of doing it. I also saw some reproductions. I don't know what exactly they're based on, if it's one of those pictures or if they had, you know, something, some other images or descriptions or whatever. But in any case, this is pretty cool. As you can imagine on the inside, there's a handle perpendicular. And this is actually one of the few things of this general design with a perpendicular handle that are legal in Canada because Canada unfortunately has a ban on push daggers and the way push daggers are defined is with the handle perpendicular to the cutting edge. So in this case the cutting edge and the handle are parallel like a knife so this is perfectly legal. If if it had an edge here, it would be illegal. Dumb and pointless, and unfortunately that makes the katar and the pata, depending on whether or not it has an edge, makes those illegal here, yeah, unfortunately, which I hate. I really, really like the, the katar. It's, it's, it's a very interesting weapon. But, you know, there's always alternatives. So this is one. You may be wondering how this is used, and I can't tell you for sure. It's just speculation because with just a few pictures, we can't really say much. And I'm not aware of any, any written sources that describe exactly how they fought with these, let alone, you know, instructional fighting manuals that didn't come about before the, uh, the, the Middle Ages, basically. So a lot of speculation, apparently, they actually had them on the left hand and then had a long knife in the other. So, makes certain sense. Still doesn't explain exactly how, like did they thrust with these or did they just cut with them? And also even when cutting there's, you could either you could strike with these points here and it really depends on exactly how they were shaped. On a few of the pictures, it looks like as if it was almost an entirely round shape. I can't see any pronounced points there. Uh, others look more like points. So in that case, I, personally, I, I designed this shape here so that the points are pretty pronounced so you can actually penetrate with them. And otherwise, I also wanted to give this a pretty 
pretty steep angle here so that you could potentially thrust with it. Again, I don't know if that's what they did, if that was the idea, but I would think it's probably possible. I want to try that out if you can thrust with a kind of crescent-shaped blade like this. If it's sharp enough, I would think you probably can. And otherwise, it would just be you know, slashing, basically. Ideally, the guard or gauntlet or whatever you want to call it would be one piece, but it's a little more challenging to make that way. And one thing I noticed is it would actually be good if it was oval rather than round, as it, as it is right now, it's round. And um, you have the width of the grip, of course, dictates how wide it has to be. But uh, in, in this direction here, clunk, in uh, the direction of the flat, basically, this could be narrower. You don't need that much space. If it was an oval cross section and as narrow as it can be, I think it would be a little easier to handle because you take some of the bulk away and uh, it would be you know, just a little easier to move. And um, with the, the weight, it would definitely be good to save as much weight here as possible just so that you have a bit more impact with that point. But at the same time, I would expect that they use this for parrying as well. So it shouldn't be too thin. It should still be structurally sound. And um, yeah, that's pretty much what I can say about it at this point. So right now the plan is, as I said, he wants to make a, an updated version, improved version. And since I can't afford both of them right now, I'm going to either send this back or if somebody wants to buy it, let me know. We can do that and I can send it directly to you. If you are interested, he said he would like $350 for it, US dollars, plus shipping to wherever you are. So uh, if that seems interesting, just contact me. Um, if I don't reply to your message. It could be because a bunch of people uh, contacted me and I just said to the first person, yep, it's yours. So, and I may not have time to reply to every single one because the, as I mentioned before, my message inbox is a disaster. It's so full, I can't keep up. So if that's the case, I'll try to reply, but I may not be able to. So in that case, if that happens, sorry, but that's just how it goes. And otherwise, I hope you found this interesting. So thanks for watching.